Hey guys, welcome to another 99 Bitcoins tutorial. Today I'm going to talk about how to create paper wallets. Now, I know it's really hard to find tutorials about paper wallets on the web. It's usually a very technical issue. So I decided to make this video about how to create paper wallets, try to keep it simple, very non-technical, so even someone who doesn't have that much of an understanding on the technical side of Bitcoin can create it. Um, basically, a paper wallet is a way to store your private key offline, what's called store, cold storage. It's just a paper wallet that holds your private key and then you can put it in a safe or in, or in a door or whatever and that's what holds your bitcoins. Now what you're going to need for this process are three things. First is a flash drive, preferably either a new flash drive or one flash drive that you formatted but not one that has software on it because you basically what we want to do is we want to avoid any malware, um, the possibility of malware when doing this process. So I just got this uh, flash drive here. It's a new one. I'm going to use this one. Second thing we want to do, we're going to need to download the Ubuntu uh, operating system. You can see it here and all the links to, to what I'm showing here are going to be down in the description. So don't no need to go and Google them. And what you want to do here is just uh, choose your operating system and then click on download. And once in this page, uh, they ask you to donate. You, If you want to donate, you can. If you don't want, you can just Click here on not now take me to the download and it will download. You see I have already downloaded here and basically it starts to download. So I'm not going to do this again. I'm just going to stop this down right now. Um, the second thing you wanna, you're going to need to use is a website called Linux Live uh, USB Creator or in short Lily. That's how we're going to call it in this tutorial. And what this does is basically allows you to install the Ubuntu on the flash drive. So kind of to explain the process in whole, what you want to do is we're going to put on an operating system on the flash drive, then reboot our computer when it's disconnected from the internet totally, only using the flash drive in that operating system, and then create our paper wallet um, so that we have actually no, um, no fear that someone can access our, uh, our computer once we're doing this process or, or anything like that. And the last thing we want to use is a website called bitaddress.org, which is a website to creating basically private keys. Um, this website is currently through the web, but what we're going to do is we're going to download, and also the link will be in the description, we're going to download this website um, to our disk on key also, to our flash drive also, and then use it without being connected to the internet. Because basically all this website is, is a bunch of files. So we're just going to download these files onto our uh, flash drive, and once we upload, reboot our computer without the internet, which is not connected to anything, through a, a new from-the-box uh, flash drive, which has a uh, a freshly download operating system, there is almost zero chance of any malware kind of hitting us and being able to, to steal our private key. So I know this might sound a bit paranoid, but if you're going to store large amounts of money, paper walls are probably the safest way today. Um, and you want to be a bit paranoid when do that because if you're already storing uh, a couple of thousand dollars, maybe even more, maybe hundred thousand, whatever you have, then it's better to be safe and sorry it takes only another two minutes so just to wrap up the first part what you need to do right now is go download Ubuntu then click here and download Lily and then um, download uh, this website bitaddress.org through the link that I put in the description once you do all of this we can continue to stage two so moving on to stage two now what we're going to do is we're going to install the Ubuntu uh, operating system on our flash drive so uh, like I told you before, we need to download this Lily program, and once you download it and install it, you're just going to run it. So I'm going to run this program now. And this is how it looks. First thing you want to do is you want to insert the flash drive into your computer. So I insert it. And now I want to choose it from here. Now, usually you won't have it on the first try, so you just click on Refresh. And then you try again. and now you see it here. On the step two, I'm going to choose the Ubuntu software I downloaded. So I'm going to here into my downloads. I'm going to write Ubuntu. I have two of them here. This is the right one. And now you see it's starting to download. Now on step four, what you need to do is only keep the format uh, checked. Now you can't do this right now because it's still uh, updating step two, but once this finishes, we're gonna use. Uh, we're gonna do, go to step four. Okay, so this needs to stay on zero. Here, I uncheck both of these. 
and only leave the format checked and click on the lightning to create. So it asks me if you want to format this disk uh, and I make sure that it's the right disk, make sure that you didn't accidentally put your hard drive or anything here and I see that it's okay and I click on okay. And now it's basically going to work and once it's finished we'll be able to move to step three. Okay so hopefully uh, the Ubuntu has installed successfully on your on your flash drive and now what we want to do is take the website that we see here and also save it on our flash drive so we'll be able to use it when we're not connected to the internet. So if you remember before there was a link in the description to download a zip file of this website and you now go to that zip file which is here and you first of all open this zip file make sure to open it because you won't be able to open it once you run the Ubuntu. And now once I open it I just want to drag this into my flash drive, so now I see it here. So now I have a flash drive which have the, has the Ubuntu with it and also this website on it. So what you want to do at this stage is two things. First of all, you want to disconnect your computer from anything that can uh, make it be, have it hooked up to the internet. So if you have wireless connectivity, turn off the wireless connectivity. If you have um, a wire, an internet wire going inside your computer, then disconnect that. And after you do that, you want to make sure that you're still, you're still able to print. So my suggestion to you is, for this stage on, to use two computers. One to watch this video, and the other one to kind of create this process. So go ahead, disconnect your computer from the internet. Make sure you can still print with your printer, because this is going to be a crucial uh, step in printing your paper wallet. And we'll move on to step four. Okay, so now for our final step. What you're going to want to do is restart your computer while the flash drive is inside. Now, when the computer starts up, when you see the, the black screen when Windows usually loads, you're going to want to hit either F1 or F12. In my computer, for example, it's F12. And it will bring you to a screen like the one you're seeing now. Now, since I couldn't actually uh, use the screen capture software uh, while rebooting the computer, then I just took a, a still photo, so you can see this here. And you need to get to this boot menu. If you don't, not sure exactly how to get to this, maybe ask someone who's a bit more computer savvy. But it's basically just pressing F12 or F1 when the computer uh, starts out uh, its load. And what you want to choose here is this: is the USB. You see the verbatim that the verbatim that's the name of the USB. And basically, you're taking the computer to load up uh, the operating system from the USB. Once you click uh, uh, enter on this, you'll get a whole bunch of uh, gibberish showing up on your computer, like like you see here. Again, I took a still photo here, still image, so you can see what's happening. And then Ubuntu will start loading, and you'll get to this screen here. Now, in this screen, you don't need to choose install Ubuntu. You just need to try Ubuntu because we're just going to use it for a very small process. So you just click on try Ubuntu and the language that you're using and then it will come up and it will look something like this. Uh, again, I'm using uh, screen captures here and I can't actually show you the process because if I run Ubuntu then I can't run this, uh, uh, this um, software that records the screen. Now that you're inside Ubuntu, what you want to go is to go here to system setting and here to printers and now what you want to do is basically just add a printer, you click add and you add your printer so you'll be able to print. Now remember, this needs to be a printer that's connected uh, um, directly to your, to your computer. It can't be a wireless printer because you need to be disconnected from the internet completely. Right now, your computer should be a standalone computer that's working always with the Ubuntu operating system on. Uh, try to print out one page once you add, a, once you add a print, uh, the printer just to make sure that it's working. And then we're going to the final step. Now what you want to do is you want to go over here to Firefox. Do a right click and open an, uh, a private window. Private browsing will look something like this. And you want to enter here in the address bar this address file then slash 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 rom slash bit address dot org uh, dash master. And again, this will be written down in the description so you don't have to kind of copy this from the screen. Once you click enter here, it what it basically does is it goes to the file that we downloaded of the website in, in the previous stage, and you'll see this uh, this screen coming up. And you want to click this, bitiris.org.html, basically going into the website. And if everything goes okay, you should be seeing this screen. Now, in order to kind of finish the process, I'm going to move uh, to this screen in actual life. It's basically the same. It won't be any different than what you're seeing. That's you see how the screen operates. Now, this is the website in actual life. What this website does is it generates a random private key. So uh, you can print it later on. 
what you do, just move your cursor around until this number here gets to zero. Um, you can either move your cursor around, or my personal favorite, just type in random characters until it gets to zero. Completely fine. I can do this all day. And it's done. Okay, so now I generated your private key. And what you want to do is go here to Paper Wall. This, these steps are identically uh, the same to what you will have if you're using the Ubuntu operating system. And here you are your paper walls. You have three different paper walls you can use. You can change the numbers of paper walls here uh, of how much you want to generate. You just print these out. You click here on print, print these out, and you have your own paper wall. So that's the end of the tutorial. I know it was a bit of a lengthy process, but when you're making a paper wall, if you're making a paper wall, it's usually to store a large amount of bitcoins. And like I said at the beginning, if you're going to do it, you're probably best off doing it right. So if you're going to store a large amount of bitcoins, you want to make sure that there's no malware, nowhere that someone can kind of spy on you. When you're doing this process, also make sure no one can see your screen or whatever, uh, uh, something like that. Do it in, in, in your own private room. Um, and I hope this tutorial was helpful for you. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment uh, down below. Just email me. Um, and I wish you the best of luck.